Hey everyone, in this video we're going to cover seven awesome reasons why you and your church should consider supporting the IMB or the International Mission Board. I've served overseas in mission capacity and worked alongside IMB missionaries and so I've seen what they do firsthand. I've learned a lot about the organization. My church currently now supports the IMB. I'm Steve Poplar for iMissions and uh, we're we have some awesome, awesome reasons why you should support the IMB. Now, this isn't to say that other organizations aren't great, but we're going to be talking about the, the distinctives of the IMB and what they do really great and why you should support them. Number one, church planting. The IMB is focused in on church planting. That is, that is their mission. It's not to start orphanages, to run clinics, or other things. They do all those things, but they do it in order to plant churches. They do evangelization and also discipleship of those uh, people up to be church leaders and to plant their churches themselves. Number two, that rolls straight into that they're focused on church planting movements. Not just planting a single church and then going on and planting another church, but rather planting a church that's going to replicate itself, a church that's going to plant other churches. Training up leaders that can train other leaders. So as the work unfolds in a country, the goal isn't to have as many believers as possible. Um, it's not the goal to have as many uh, church buildings as possible. It's to have leaders that reproduce and churches that reproduce. And so the uh, IMB will take sometimes a servant role in places where, where there's already an established church or whether the church has started to, to grow the IMB will step back into an advisory capacity where they're discipling pastors, discipling leaders, and they're not doing a lot of the work themselves because that's in the hands of the national believers and the national churches. Some places, like in South America and Central America and such, where there's established um, evangelical churches, and, and not only that, but established evangelical denominations, the IMB will oftentimes actually write a check to those local denominations, provide oversight, provide uh, counsel, and provide uh, discipleship as, as they can. Um, but they realize that it's not uh, the Americans or, or Westerners' uh, job to go to every country in the world and boss the local people around. And, and I really appreciate that. To see that how much respect the IMB treats national believers with and national um, Baptist conventions with is, is just really great. Um, so church planting movements. And number three, unreached people groups. That kind of ties in with that, that the IMB is focused on sending missionaries to where there aren't strong enough churches. The definition of an unreached people group, we would say, is less than 2% evangelical in the population of that people group. And so that's where the IMB focuses on sending personnel. Um, th there's work that goes on outside those unreached people groups, but the IMB is focused on sending a personnel to those areas. Now, most of those areas are in hard to reach places, closed access and dangerous places. So that's, that's the next one, is that the IMB is not afraid to send personnel into closed access and dangerous places. You would be extremely surprised to hear where IMB missionaries are serving currently. Places that you've never heard of before. Places that maybe you've heard of for all the wrong reasons and you've never heard that missionaries are serving in those places. The IMB has to keep a lot of things secret about where they serve um, so you'll see uh, videos with people's faces blacked out. You'll see places, people saying that the, I, they can't say where they serve. Um, and for good reason. And from insider sources, I'll tell you that um, I know that the IMB sends people to some very, very dangerous places and very, very uh, closed places. And that's just really great. A, a lot of mission organizations shy away from that. There's some other organizations that, that will specialize in that. But it, um, when it comes to conflict zones, when it comes to severe persecution and such, um, the IMB is willing to go to those places. We'll talk about some of those other organizations that do that too. But uh, next thing is that kind of goes hand in hand with that is the IMB is really good at building platforms. A platform is like an organization or a business that people use to get visas in order to get into a country that won't allow missionaries in. 
So the IMB is really good at setting up these businesses and organizations. It takes a lot more oomph to get these things going. And so a lot of smaller mission organizations aren't very good at this. Or they, they, they just don't have the resources to do it. Whereas the IMB actually dedicates specific resources to setting up businesses and setting up organizations like this that missionaries can use to get into closed access countries. Obviously, we can't talk about those things, um, but I will say this, though, hundreds and hundreds of missionaries from other organizations are serving on platforms built by the IMB. I'm not being too bold in saying that. The IMB not only gets their missionaries into hard access places, they get a lot of other organizations' missionaries into those places as well. So um, that's something that's really awesome, I think. Next thing is the IMB is big. And so whenever you go into a closed access area um, or where you go into a place where there's a lot of unreached people groups, you almost always are going to find an IMB team there. Might be a small team, but you're always going to find an IMB team there, and they often form kind of like the strategic and the, uh, the kind of almost the leadership of of those organizations. So a lot of other organizations will send in missionaries, but the IMB personnel often uh, focus in on the strategic planning and also making sure that. Uh, people groups are being uh, being covered, and if a mission organization moves into an area and trying to do research, a lot of times the IMB is able to provide them first-hand research and first-hand experience um, of what's going on in all these different areas. And so even though the IMB may not be in an area, they often are have the information that's necessary and also a lot of contacts. And also when um, other mission organizations get into trouble, um, a lot of times the IMB steps in to kind of help those other mission organizations to stay in or to uh, know how to, to deal with the local politics and stuff like that. So um, if you want to know where all the unreached people groups are and what all the teams are in the world, I would say the IMB has, um, usually has the best idea of what's going on pretty much everywhere. Now, the IMB will share that with other organizations, so uh, it's not to say that other organizations don't know what's going on because other organizations are contributing to that information. But when it comes to high-level sharing information, IMB is at the center of that or, or in the top big three, uh, so to speak. Uh, the final thing is that the IMB pays salaries to their to the missionaries. IMB missionaries, uh, full time and uh, short term missionaries, uh, generally do not have to raise support. That is starting to change. They are starting to add some uh, raise your own support missionaries alongside the regular teams. But generally, the IMB will will pay the salary of missionaries coming in, so they don't have to focus in on on fundraising. A lot of times the best missionaries are not the best fundraisers, right? Um, also, what happens if a missionary is doing really great work overseas and then suddenly they lose one of their critical support members, one of their churches stops giving or something like that. They have to get on a plane and fly back to the U.S. or, or to other countries and they have to go back to raising support. Even though they were in the middle of a very critical moment in the in the evolution of their church in that unreached people group, that that's really rough. IMB uh, makes sure that their missionaries are able to focus in on the missions work and allow a lot of us back in the states to focus in on the fundraising work. So that's another great reason why I would suggest um, you and your church should seriously consider giving to the IMB. If you're already doing the Light Moon Christmas offering this year, that's awesome. And uh, I'm doing that right alongside you guys. Um, we're, we're out here working hard to support the missionaries that we have overseas. God bless you and have a great day.